Okay, I thought I would uh, show off my new log server, which is using Elasticsearch and Kibana and my own syslog daemon written in Node. A couple of people have asked about it, so I thought I would show it off real quick and an example of how useful it's been. So this is a, a dashboard. That I, I've made several different dashboards in Kibana. And this is one that shows DNS-related stuff. So you can see this is being recorded on Saturday. You can see the volume of DNS queries has has gradually gone down. These are the some of the different DNS servers. Um, here we can look at who's querying for things and what they're querying for. So I can find uh, if I see a really big slice, the odds are it's a, a manufacturing machine or an engineering machine that's run amok and is querying for its own host name repeatedly. Silly things like that. Uh, and then we'll run on this panel. We can see the types of DNS queries. So if I see a big jump in queries for MX records, for instance, that clearly would be something to miss. And then down here, uh, these are the DNS queries that are being blocked. We have our own internal DNS filters, and then on top of that, we're running Open DNS. And I look at this on a routine basis to look for anything that's amiss. So, for instance, this is one that was yesterday. I had a client that was using a uh, private VPN software kind of like Tor and of course we're blocking that we don't allow people to, to bypass filters and so um, uh, that was showing up usually in here I'll see the the DNS servers that our Barracudas use and I'll see a bunch of uh, botnet traffic being blocked by the Barracudas or they're doing DNS lookups on botnet IPs things like that but what's really cool is that and this is why I'm a big believer in visualization <coughs> Uh, a while back, several months ago actually, I came in one day and things looked quite different. Um, when you look at these every morning, you get a very quickly get a feel for what normal looks like. So a couple months ago, I came in and this is what I was looking at. Now that's clearly different. <laughs> something's really wrong here. So here we have one IP address. You can see that I've picked out the, the DHCP host name as well and it's repeatedly making DNS queries for different pseudo random looking host names. That's not good. And we're blocking them but that's definitely not good. So let's go take a look. And this is the other thing I love about this login system is now we can drill down on stuff like that, right? So we can come over here to discover. We can say show me everything with that source IP and the RPZ policy is NX domain meaning our internal filters blocked it so here you can see that the the blocked DNS query started at 0650 and I won't bore you with the details because it'll take a while but uh, I, I searched earlier for all of the DHCP requests and could see that they signed on more like 4 in the morning that was when they got on the, on the network but th then these DNS queries started um, the other thing that this showed me, well, we can make our this output is a little untidy, so we can uh, simplify it and say source IP and query and RPC rules. So here's our DNS query. Here's the rule that blocked it. I recognize this IP, this is the inverse IP, as an open DNS IP, meaning it's botnet related. That's bad. So this system is probably infected with a botnet or with a bot. And if we scroll down, you see there's a lot of them. So let's zoom in on just when it started. Let's identify what was going on just before it started. So we'll zoom in again. So we can see it started sometime just before 0659 or, or between 0659 and 0659.30. So let's dial in our time range even more narrowly. Let's say, or a little less narrowly, let's say uh, from 0600 to 0700. And now you can see that there's this big long gap where everything is fine and then it started. So let's find out what happened just before that. Actually, before I do that, because we did say RPC policy is not domain. So let's change this and say the source IP is that or test IP is that same IP. So basically now we're searching not just DNS query logs, we're searching all the logs for anything that has this IP address 
as a source IP or a desktop IP. So you can see these are all DNS queries. Most of them are getting blocked. And if we keep scrolling down, we should get to, and as I scroll down, it's expanding the, the search to, I mean, expanding to earlier records. Okay, here we go. So now you can see this is where, this is before those DNS queries started. So we can see the usual sort of thing, Mozilla, Salesforce, Google. And then all of a sudden it started. And look at that, this one doesn't have a query. So let's see what that is. If we expand this, you'll see, uh-oh, this is Barnyard. So this is a snort hit and the threat the thread ID is evil redirect leading to an exploit exploit kit. That's bad. So let's expand our stuff here. Let's show the thread ID and the packet, the decoded packet. And let's scroll back down. So now you can see there are multiple snort hits in here as well. So there's the one that we expanded. This is what I did on the day to find out what happened to this machine. So here you can see, if I keep scrolling down, you'll see nothing but the, the usual normal sort of queries. But here's the first query right before I see this snort alert. And sure enough, if we go to Blue Coat and ask it, it says, yeah, that's suspicious. So they queried for this host name for some reason at 0658. And uh, seconds later, a couple seconds later, we have a snort alert saying um, that, that this this was a uh, redirect leading to an exploit kit. And then we see a DNS query here. This one looks sort of out of the ordinary, doesn't it? It doesn't look like anything else they've been querying for. Actually, it's right here too. So let's see what Blue Coat says about that. And sure enough, it says it's uh, malicious. So big surprise, right? So this is where the infection happened. This is exactly how I dissected it when it occurred. This is uh, when it happened, and um, this is right just a, uh, just like less than a minute later. Was this 0658, 0659 in 20 seconds? So about 30 seconds later, this machine started making botnet-related DNS queries, which we were blocking, thank goodness. But um, clearly, the machine got infected. So that's why I'm a big believer in visualization. Um, it's why I love this, having having all my logs in Kibana, I can very easily search for all kinds of things. Um, if we go back to today, let's say the last 24 hours, I can combine, um, I can combine uh, all sorts of data. So I've got snort alerts coming in. I've also got alerts from the Palo Alto firewalls, from a FireEye, from a variety of things, and I can put them all on one dashboard if I'd like. So there's some visualizations I've been putting together that will eventually be separated and on their own dashboard, but for right now they're just they're just separate visualizations. But we can look at, say, threats by thread ID. Here you can see these are uh, people probing our VoIP server. And if I mouse over this, you can see that's the destination IP. So you can see there's a bunch of source IPs that are all doing VoIP-related probes on that on that uh, that IP. And maybe I want to filter out the uh, the uh, DMZ face the out externally facing stuff, the things that are in the DMZ. So I could say, and not source int or dest int is star DMZ. All my interface names are something dash DMZ for things that are for sensors that are watching DMZ traffic. Well, instead of the last 15 minutes, let's make that the last 24 hours. That's more interesting. So now you can see that, that uh, we've got a, a whole ver a different collection of, of threat alerts now. These are This is a, a, a snort rule, rule that I wrote that watches for traffic from specific uh, server subnets going to the outside. So that's basically it. It's a pretty cool tool. Um, I've put together a variety of dashboards. So I've got one that's start of day where I look for suspicious queries. It's quiet on the weekend. <laughs> I've got some queries that search for 
possible spearfish that search for DNS queries that I know are malicious or that search for hits on the DNS filters. So that's basically it.